you need to perform analysis of packets between some communicating devices on a network. I'm going to show you how to use a sniffer or otherwise known as a protocol analyzer in Packet Tracer and also EVNG. Okay, uh, I'll, I can link in the uh, cards on this video uh, how to add a couple nodes to Packet Tracer, a previous video I did, but we already have two PCs here connected with a crossover cable and each computer has an IP address. IP config on PC0 will tell us it has 1.1.1.1. And IP config on PC number one says we have 1.1.1.2. So 1.1.1.1 can ping 1.1.1.2. If you use a dash T, it's a persistent ping and it does not stop until you hit control C. Now, what if you want to sniff the traffic between these two computers? What you do, you go down here to end devices, scroll over, and there you have a little sniffer. Pull that out here, click on it, and it shows that it has two ports. It has a port zero and it has a port one. Okay, so those are the two ports, a port zero and a port one. The port on this, this um, packet tracer sniffer that enables you to see the traffic is port zero. Port zero is the interface that you will see traffic and it's only in the incoming direction on port zero. You don't get the opposite traffic going out. You only get the traffic coming in port zero. So, if you can only get the traffic coming in on port zero of a packet tracer sniffer, then you need to use two of them. So if you have a PC in it here and a PC here, and you want to sniff the traffic going this way and also the replies, the return traffic, you're going to need to use two sniffers in series. So you'll put one sniffer here and one sniffer here. I'll say sniffer, I'll put a little letter S for sniffer. Port zero is here, it's gonna catch the traffic coming in. There's port one. Then port one on this sniffer is here and port zero is here, which is gonna catch the return traffic coming in, okay? So this one catches the traffic going that way. This one catches the traffic going that way, all right? So we first need to delete our connection to add the sniffer. Hit this little button here, then that allows you to delete something. Uncheck the button. Um, actually, okay, there we go. You have to reset it by clicking something else. Put the sniffer in place. Add a connection. This is with a, okay, add it to port zero. Did you see that? We put it on port zero. Then let's put another sniffer out here. It's in end devices. And add another connection. Click the lightning bolt. Click a straight through. Connect to port zero, ethernet zero. Now you need to connect the sniffers with a crossover cable, port one to port one. Everything is green. We're good to go. Let's make sure we can still ping. We can. Okay, let's stop. Then let's click on one of our sniffers. Go to GUI. We already have some traffic on there. You see that? So this is sniffer one, or excuse me, sniffer zero. Here is sniffer one. Go to GUI. Okay, so we already have some traffic. Let's move those over a little bit. And let's just watch these. Let's ping again. This time, if you, if you just hit ping, uh, type ping, you can see dash n count. So we will ping three times. 1.1.1.2. And watch the sniffers right here. Look at that, ICMP, ICMP. 
So we had three more ICMP packets. All right. If you click on one of those ICMP packets, you get a breakout of what the uh, whole packet looks like. You get the Ethernet layer right here on top. You get the IP layer. You get the ICMP layer. I'm going to tell you right now, years ago when I first got my start in IT, I started working with networks. Started, I was a sysadmin working on uh, Microsoft uh, domains. And when I started looking at Netmon or Network Monitor, I think it was a packet sniffer built into um, Windows NT Server. Uh, then I started looking at Ethereal, Ether Real. I think it's pronounced Ethereal, which I think was what became what is known as Wireshark today. When I started looking at traffic on a sniffer, my eyes were open. I started understanding more about networks, and I think that's what really got me to start really liking networks and made me the network engineer that I am today, got, or at least got me started. Uh, in that direction. I was very intrigued with networks. So uh, this was this brings back memories of my first big beginnings of looking at uh, packet headers and the rest is history. I've been doing it for a couple, couple decades now. So this puts a lot of theory in perspective. A lot of the stuff you've been reading about, you can now see the Ethernet layer, the IP layer, the ICMP layer. You literally can even see the preamble the alternating one, alternating one zero one zero one zero uh, bits, the start of frame delimiter, SFD, I think is a two binary digits one one. You usually don't see those on a sniffer. I'm going to tell you that right now. You usually won't see the preamble and the start of frame delimiter on a Wireshark sniffer. Normally, the sniffer starts right here at the destination MAC address. You see the source MAC address, the Ethernet type code 0800. Uh, the data and the frame check sequence. Now, this data is what is carried in these upper layer packets. So here's IP version 4, uh, the header length, diff serve code points, and just the list goes on and on. Source IP address, destination address, then you have your ICMP type and code field and uh, various other things and the, the variable data that's carried in the uh, PDU uh, for ping. Okay, so that's the ping packet that is seen on Sniffer Zero, and it's very much similar. It's actually the ICMP reply that you would see over here. All right, so that is uh, how to sniff packets in Packet Tracer using the built in sniffer capability. Oh, and one more thing before I move on. Uh, the, no, you know, if you have a network built out with a PC and a switch and a router, then you have the, um, the router in the middle going to other VLANs, and you have doubts or questions, I wonder if the traffic is making it, you know, say for instance, you have a, a, a you know, you put the sniffer, well, before you put the sniffer in place, you have PC and a PC, you have a switch, you have a router, uh, another switch, and, and you have doubts. You're, you're doing something and you, you're wondering if the traffic is making it all the way over to here. Well, you're going you're gonna to disconnect here and you're going to add a sniffer in there and verify, well, wherever, you, wherever you want to verify. If you want to verify, is the traffic making it here, add the sniffer there. Okay, add the sniffer there. If you see the traffic getting there, then, then you know, wow, it's really thundering and lightning outside. <laughs> um, put the sniffer there. Verify that the traffic is making it. If you then know it's making it there, add the sniffer here. And then you know it made it across the router. If you have, you know, you could put a sniffer at every location. And then you can see where the traffic is or is not making it. Just keep in mind that port zero, wherever you add that sniffer, is where you're seeing the traffic, okay? So, and you're only getting it on the inbound direction. So if you connected zero over here and you're not seeing anything, well, don't immediately think, well, the traffic might not be making it there.
because you don't see traffic going out zero. You only see it coming in. Okay. Uh, another thing, just wanted to uh, close the loop on the what we what we analyzed here uh, is that I mean I just wanted to finish up. The source IP 1.1.1.1 going to destination IP 1.1.1.2, and then we clicked on a return packet on the other sniffer. It's the opposite. So source is 1.1.1.1, but over here the source is 1.1.1.2. All right, so that is packet tracer sniffer. It is raining and the thunder is cracking outside, so hopefully it doesn't bother you too much while I'm recording this video. Let's get into uh, EVNG and the built-in Wireshark capability. All right, so here we are. We have two routers and we'll click on one. We have 1.1.1.1 on that one. Let's click on this one. We have 1.1.1.2 on that one. Okay, and we can ping over there. So, right click on the router, go to capture, and you can sniff an interface just like that. Here we are, here we have fast ethernet 00, zero so we want to capture fast ethernet 00. zero. It opens up this black window. Just minimize it. Do not close it. Just minimize it. And there we go. We have our Wireshark capture running now. Okay. Now, the nice thing about Wireshark is it's it's open source free tool. It's used all over the industry. To be familiar and proficient in Wireshark is a really good idea uh, as you're coming up in, in your network learning. And so... The one that we previously saw in Packet Tracer is just some kind of like custom built-in thing in Packet Tracer. Wireshark, you're going to see it everywhere if you didn't know that already. So another thing to point out, in EVNG, using... Wow. <laughs> uh, using Wireshark, you're getting traffic coming and going on an interface. So this is great. This is typically normally what you would see when you sniff a uh, interface is you'll get traffic in both directions. All right, so let's get back over to this. And so uh, we can go over here and ping again, and let's look at what we see on Wireshark. Five pings, and there we go. There's our five pings. Click this red button to stop it, and then we can see if you click on this first ICMP, we see source 1.1.1.1 going to destination 1.1.1.2. Click the next, next packet in series and you get the opposite. 1.1.1.2 going to destination 1.1.1.1. You open up the ICMP layer and you see it is in fact an echo reply. All right. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more with Wireshark while we're on the topic. If you want to do a filter, just type ICMP and hit the enter key. And it filters, only shows ICMP. So something that's nice about a display filter in this toolbar right here is it still has the other packets in capture, but they're just not being displayed at the moment. So when you remove that filter by hitting this X, then you have proof that you do in, you do in fact have all these other packets. They just weren't be, they're, they're not being displayed. So again, ICMP, hit the enter key, and there you go. Uh, oh, you know what? We had previously stopped it. So this is a good time to tell you that if you restart Wireshark in EVNG, continue without saving, you get an error. So you have to close it and you have to re reopen it again. Okay? So type ICMP, hit enter, go back to your router interface, and there you go. Now, 
I'm continuing to ping. Okay, there we go. It's showing on the screen. If you ever don't see real-time display, you need to hit this down arrow window here. If, see, if I click it and it, it unchecks it, now when I ping, you no longer see real-time display on the screen. You have to click that down arrow and then you see real-time display. See the, the incrementing numbers? All right. There is a lot to understand about these filters. You can daisy chain filters together to make it more specific, less specific, you know, things like that. And so they're really, really handy. Okay, now another thing, if you had an elaborate network in here with more routers, you can sniff at various locations. I'll just show you just this other location here, this other router, um, Fast Ethernet 00 on router number two, go to capture. Fast Ethernet 00. And let's move that window over. So now we have router one and router two capturing. And let's go back to our pings. And you can see the traffic at both places. There you go. So now you can verify that it is in fact being received at, or it's being sent by one router, being received by the other, being sent by this one, and being received by this one. So there you have it. Well, that concludes my video on uh, protocol an analysis on uh, looking at packets in a network using Packet Tracer and EvenG. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, if you like what you're getting from this channel, don't forget to subscribe, share it with somebody else that could benefit from it. I know you know other people out there that are uh, maybe struggling or in need of some good, good tech talks on uh, getting them going in a deeper understanding of how networks work. All right. Thank you all. And I look forward to the next one.